Hello everyone, my name is Paola Romano. I am part of the admission team here in Milan. I'm very glad today to host this special event here in Domus Academy. Uh, we will have our directors. We will have Fabio Sidu, which is the managing director of Domus Academy here with us today. And we will also have Mark Anderson, which is the director of education. Um, I'm really glad to host this event. Uh, guys, feel free to ask any questions on the chat. Uh, we will have a few presentations on the school. And uh, so we will more than glad to see some of the questions coming. Um, I have to say uh, just a few things be before we start. The event is, this, is divided in two parts. The first part in which we will have our directors um, talking about the school and Domus Academy, while the second part uh, will be with one of our former alumni, uh, which is joining us today to also um, tell about his experience here in Domus Academy. The first part will also be live on our social media. So guys, uh, feel free to follow us also there. And uh, without further ado, I leave uh, the stage uh, to Fabio Sidu, which is the managing director of uh, Domus Academy. Hello, everybody. I hope you're safe. I see so many people connected today. Wow, this is amazing. Okay, as you can see, guys, we are, uh, let's say, uh, doing this uh, uh, broadcast direct on, directly from our design lab. Um, actually, um, I'm very proud to see uh, students working here today because this is a clear evidence that we actually started back the activities and they are very um, excited to, to come back to the school actually and uh, have, um, actually start again this amazing uh, journey uh, in Domus Academy. Uh, to me, this is a chance also to, let's say, update you uh, guys about uh, a series of activities we, has done, we have done for the uh, security of the school, actually, and uh, to answer some of your questions that maybe you are uh, curious about uh, uh, for the, the reopening of the school uh, and also for the new intake uh, of uh, October 2020 which is going to start, by the way, on the 28th of October. So as you can uh, see, um, we are, actually I have the mask, and we are uh, applying all the uh, regulation of the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education regarding the activities on school. Uh, we have uh, uh, granted uh, the distancing from the students, they are completely safe. Here in the labs, uh, they are, uh, there, is a, there is availability of the personal uh, disposable items uh, that are uh, given to the students uh, um, when they need, actually. Uh, there is a stock of personal disposable items here in the, in the lab. And there is also the, the possibility to collect uh, the personal disposable item at the entrance uh, of the school. At the entrance of the school, actually, we have uh, um, a series of devices that are, gonna, uh, let's say, uh, taking the, the temperature of the student entry. So, and uh, there is a, a device that recognizes also if the, the student is entering with a mask or without a mask. Uh, furthermore, all the uh, areas of the school, including the uh, the laboratories, as you can see, are sanitated on a daily basis, actually twice a day, uh, even during the uh, lunch break. Uh, there are, as you can see in my shoulders, also uh, items that can be used uh, in the laboratories, these are classes actually, and these classes are used for each student uh, one by one. So. At the end of the lesson, the student leaves the item in the box of the used item to be sanitated for the next time. 
Uh, as you can see also, they are respecting the distancing between each other, so they are working uh, in a uh, uh, completely safe environment. And uh, to do this, uh, the students can uh, actually uh, uh, book the, their uh, seat in the laboratories uh, through the, our uh, application and to our uh, student platform. So basically, this, are, this is how we are thinking about the reopening of the school and how we are actually um, providing the rules for the new opening of October intake, uh, which is going to be for sure um, uh, with all the students coming back from all over the world uh, as soon as uh, uh, the uh, let's say travel restriction for the different countries uh, will be uh, will allow students to come. And I expect, we expect, this is going to happen gradually. Um, for those of you that doesn't, do, do not know uh, Domus Academy, uh, let me introduce a little bit, uh, because I see also some students connected today, maybe they are actually curious uh, to know uh, how is the environment here in the school and, and how, how happy we are to, to see the students back again. And, uh, but for those of you that don't, doesn't know the Domus Academy, maybe, maybe it's interesting to know uh, some of the story of Domus Academy. Domus Academy was founded in 1982 by a group of Creative Mind uh, that had a project about uh, uh, the teaching of design uh, in, uh, uh, in Italy. Uh, it was a project that was supposed to last just, uh, uh, just 10 years. And uh, they felt the need uh, to, to fill the gap of uh, the teaching in Italian design in Italy. I mean, the Italian design world was well known at that day all around, all around the world, but there was no postgraduate school uh, teaching design uh, in Italy and actually all over the world. So they decided to, to found this school. After 10 years, uh, they realized that the environment was completely changed and there was still the need to, to teach uh, Italian design uh, to, uh, to younger professionals, even because the environment was continu continuously challenging uh, the new professional uh, in facing a new, uh, new scenario. So that was the reason why they kept on doing it. Uh, and actually, we uh, we arrived uh, today. Uh, next year, we're going to celebrate, in two years, we're going to celebrate our 40th uh, birthday. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward for that day because it's going to be a great uh, result uh, for Domus Academy as an institution. And uh, what, uh, what is the common uh, thing that link us to our roots? It's actually the visionary approach, I might say. So the fact that actually we are used to face new scenario. And uh, to me, these days, uh, these are, this is an important, uh, uh, let's say, um, think uh, you guys that want to enroll in Domus Academy should consider. Uh, basically, the fact that in this new scenario, there's going to be the needs of professional, uh, let's say, finding a, a disruptive solution, a creative solution in order to uh, to face uh, any kind of new needs uh, that uh, after the COVID uh, emergency, uh, human being might uh, uh, have the need to solve, such as uh, how, the way how to interact with a device, the way to interact how to interact with a space, the way to interact between human beings, actually. So imagine uh, those students that will uh, um, be graduate this year and the students that will be graduating the next year, they will have, a, of, of course, a competitive advantage because they will be capable uh, actually to be those uh, creative talent and a disruptive mind that, uh, I mean, it's actually in the needs of the companies nowadays. So uh, think about this uh, and think about, uh, actually, I'm really proud of the students that I, we already have, uh, let's say, during this academic year, because these are uh, distinctive talents. Uh, these are those that, that have been facing the emergency uh, together with us uh, and will be 
well prepared uh, as a future professional uh, in order to uh, face uh, other uh, day by day problems, let's say, after encountering such a big, uh, uh, let's say, uh, after moving themselves in such a big, uncomfortable zone, I might say that they have a special, uh, let's say, uh, tools uh, and skill in order to face the, the future, the immediate future. Uh, before leaving the stage to my colleague, Mark Anderson, I guess there are some, some questions so, coming. Yeah, in the meantime that we see some uh, questions coming, uh, you know, there are some commonly asked questions that our students always ask. Like, for example, you know, Domus Academy is a master's degree. We, we, we give master's degree. So what's the employment rate? Uh, uh, for our students that come out from Domus Academy? Yeah, uh, of course, I might say, thanks for the question, uh, Paola. Uh, of course, I might say that uh, uh, a key distinctive attributes of Domus Academy is actually uh, the possibility to create a network with the companies. It's actually included, and then Mark will explain better the, uh, the academic structure. Um, it's actually included in the, in the experience of uh, uh, Domus Academy, the fact uh, to deal continuously with professional and, uh, and companies. I actually um, assisted to the final presentation a couple of uh, weeks ago uh, of uh, Starbucks, uh, which was working with us in order to, um, uh, to implement a new solution uh, in, this, uh, in this scenario on rel in relation to, to the brand and to the uh, let's say actually the storage of uh, the Rossary storage, which is in Milano, and I and actually perceive there, but there, there how important is the let's say virtual circles that we create. The students participating in this workshop actually uh, have the possibility to show them uh, how good they are to the company, and at the end of the journey, the companies already know them. So once they enter as an intern in the company, uh, they are able to. Uh, let's say, explain, uh, uh, they are able to, let's say, be kind of plug and play because they are in the company actually, because they've been working for at least six weeks together with them. So that's the reason why our employability rate uh, is 92% after the master. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, we have another question actually from Instagram, uh, and it's a good afternoon. So, good afternoon, Catherine. Uh, do you have any scholarship for non-European students? Okay, uh, the scholarship for actually non-European students are just uh, finished. Uh, I guess the competition was closed uh, one month ago. Uh, maybe a little bit more, but it was not, not more than one month and a half. Uh, actually, now there is a competition for European students uh, uh, running. Uh, but I guess uh, that for the future we will be opening Edition, uh, which is going to be for the February intake. Um, uh, actually, uh, I would like to take the chance maybe to introduce a new um, opportunity that we are being, uh, we will be implementing for the future. Uh, there will be the possibility for international students uh, to uh, participate to a preparatory course, uh, which is going to give uh, uh, the, the skills uh, in order to enter to the, to the master. So, and this preparatory course will start in October, and it's going to be for the, uh, for the students enrolling in February, for international students. Uh, so they have the possibility to fill the gap of the entry requirements we, we need to, to ask to the students in order to graduate uh, uh, with a Master of First Level degree uh, recognized by the Ministry of Education, and so this will be the chance also to start thinking, let's say, to enroll uh, uh, in this pre preparatory course, which is uh, uh, fundamental in order to, uh, to enter the, the course. And this is going to be attached to the course itself. It's not something standalone, it's something connected to the course. Um, yeah, for the European students, instead, I would suggest to have a look to, uh, to our uh, web page dedicated to the scholarship, which is already in place uh, for the European students. Okay, so thank you very much for being here. In You're case welcome. we have any more questions, you can come back. Okay, I will leave like the stage to Mark Anderson, the Director of Education. Thank you for joining, guys. I'm still here around, so in case there are questions, I will come back. Thank you so thank much. You.
Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here. Uh, we're happy to be here on campus, back at school, after this uh, period, which has been difficult for everyone, uh, not just for us at Domus Academy, uh, not for us just in Italy, but from around the globe. Um, uh, we, uh, in this period, we uh, obviously have been uh, continuing with the academic uh, courses, uh, transferring our courses, both theoretical and practical courses, online, uh, which has been challenging for our students. Uh, and we decided at the beginning to take a very radical approach and uh, not to do traditional online courses during this period, but essentially transfer uh, our courses uh, from the classroom, from the physical classroom online. So we're, we, in this period, we haven't been doing um, uh, asynchronous courses, so you're, the, the students have always had direct contact, even though by remote, uh, through through individual sessions, and um, using the, the online tools of our, of our platform, the students have been able to, to break up into work groups, etc. So we've been, what we've done is in this period is replicating uh, what actually was happening here normally on campus. Uh, in this period, um, that's so we've gone forward, we've been continuing collaborating with companies, uh, working on briefs. Um, the companies have joined us from remote. Uh, we've also had uh, guests, uh, guest lectures from different parts of the globe, which has been uh, an, a, an advantage which we usually can't take, uh, which we usually can't take advantage of. Um, but we're here today back on, back on campus and with uh, certain activities uh, active. One of them is here in, in, in the laboratory uh, itself, and we have some students in the background who are working on the projects. Um, and this will continue, continue out throughout the, the, this academic year. When we'll, be, we'll be back uh, in September, uh, and we'll be doing uh, courses. Uh, some of the courses will be in blended mode, so that will be online and physical. But our design courses, which is, which is core of our academic approach will be in, in campus uh, physically, uh, but also maintaining it. It's probably introduced all the, the levels of safety and security. Um, this moment in Milan, uh, uh, all the indications, and what we're, we're getting back to what is more of a new norm, and that uh, we're back at work, uh, bars and restaurants, and, and they are open. And so yeah, it's going back to a new normal, we call it a new normal because this is something that will go on for some time. Um, we'll need to maintain certain precautions, but uh, we're very happy to be, to be back and active again. So just um, for those who don't know us too much, uh, let me just give you just a, a couple indications about who we are, what's our structure, and what we offer. We have, uh, uh, Thomas Academy is a post-master's level study, so we do not have undergraduate study. We have uh, courses divided into four macro areas, design, fashion, experience, and, and business. Uh, within these air, four macro areas, we have 11 different master's programs, which range from uh, urban uh, vision and architectural design to product design, fashion design, uh, to programs of management and business related to the creative industries, uh, luxury brand management, for example. Um, I won't go through all of them. I, I will invite you to take, a, to take a look at our website or contact us uh, through, through institutional email. We can give you all sorts of information. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the things which I want to just give you a little bit uh, information on the structure of how we organize the academics is quite different from other postgraduate institutions. Um, we, um, our approach, some, sometimes they refer to it as a pragmatic approach, but it's not really because we organize our core, uh, the curriculum around workshops. Workshops are not what we see here necessarily today in a physical workshop, but they're actually design courses, workshops where we bring in con content from the outside. Uh, whether it's theoretical, conceptual, uh, collaborating with companies, collaborating with professionals. And this becomes a sort of an expanded space of the project where uh, the majority of content and the intervention uh, happens within this space. So it just uh, presumes, as 
all you've already been through with your undergraduate courses. You have you have your studio design courses where you have a break and you're directed. Uh, in the in, in, with the postgraduate, we're expecting a level of something different. We we integrating theoretical content and direction, inspiration within the design course itself. So it's what we call it the expanded design space. So this is much of our, our, our uh, focus uh, throughout the course, throughout the, 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 the academic pathways. Uh, here, we've, instead of uh, working on a semester or trimester basis, we're working on actually five different modules throughout the year. And the module is made up of concentrated theoretical and skill-based courses uh, at the beginning for two weeks. And then it goes into this expanded design space where you're thrown into the middle of uh, resolving problems, identifying problems, resolving problems, uh, thinking about uh, scenarios to resolve things that are yet yet to come, uh, come about. So um, as Fabio mentioned before, um, the Domus Academy we like to, to, to say we're, we're the most visionary school. This, the, the visionary part actually becomes through the activity which we do here uh, with the contribution of, of the students themselves into a wider discourse on thinking about addressing and analyzing uh, what will be. And this is, this is so that as students, as professionals, you can prepare to address the new professions and a constantly changing scenario. Okay. okay, so um, a question that we uh, get asked a lot is which are some of the companies that we have collaborations with? Okay, we actually have, we have um, uh, a long list of, of, of companies which we collaborate with um, uh, in the various areas. But before going into the list, let me just give you some of the scenarios of how we collaborate with the companies. Um, um, what, as Fabio introduced, and, uh, we collaborate with them in the design studios themselves. Uh, we're often uh, investigating uh, large questions uh, um, where the, the companies bring in an outside expertise and they collaborate with professors, with the external lecturers uh, and to bring in expertise. And so they actually are, are collaborating with us within the academics. So we're not responding so to industry briefs, um, but we're doing design research, uh, exploring, investigating, and proposing. Um, just to name, uh, we have a long, long list. So I brought, I brought the list, I brought the list in front of me of some of the names, so I'll just read some of them off for you. In the design area, uh, we've worked with Alessi, Cartel, um, Buffram, Technogym, Timberland, Boffy, um, Fashion Area, uh, Ferragamo, Maris, Le, I'm Isla Maris, which is the young line of Antonio Maris, um, Margella, Lufficello, uh, Timberland. So these are, these are, the list goes on. And um, one of the interesting things about our collaboration with the companies is that we, with each workshop or each model module throughout the year, this is a, a unique formulation. So we have a theme a, a, uh, that we're that we're addressing. Uh, we put together specific a workshop uh, five times throughout the year for each of our major areas. So each time it's changing. So we'll have a theme, company, external professionals, and internal faculty addressing and creating a unique experience. Uh, business areas from Kickstarter to Bulgari Hotel, uh, Christie's, Slowware, or in the experience area, our experience area is uh, interaction design, service design, and visual brand uh, management uh, from Google uh, to Samsung, uh, Cisco, and the, and the list goes on. So we have actually, uh, uh, we collaborate regularly uh throughout the year and uh, the, the companies are very happy and, and they're, they're very available to us and coming and collaborating on talks within the workshops etc 
Okay, so thank you very much for answering to this question. I have a few questions coming, actually. Uh, so uh, I would like to start from this one that Beatrice asked. Is I heard that Fabio Novembre is the scientific director of Domus Academy. Uh, is it true? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Fabio Novembre is, uh, I'm not sure uh, where the student is, if she's Italian or not, Fabio Novembre is a, a very important uh, uh, young, we'll say young generation uh, or of the next generation designers, uh, who's had a, has had always a very irreverent, radical approach uh, to the design and product industry, but he also works in architecture and he is our, our scientific director, absolutely. Um, and he has interaction with the students, uh, he, he does different lectures throughout the year. Um, and very, very, very inspirational, uh, and, and the, the approach is always, always fascinating, and, and it's always very exciting to when, when you get a chance to, to yeah, meet definitely. and hear him talk. So uh, I see another question actually. So uh, how should the motivational letter be structured for maybe a master like fashion management? Okay. Well, here's we get into some of the the the, the application requirements. Uh, one of the uh, the most important things is through all your material is document your experience uh, document your individual specific experience the more information we have the better we can understand who you are uh, the better understand what your motivations are the motivation letter is is particularly important because sometimes uh, not everything can come out in within a CV it's this is particular with our management or business or fashion management programs where um, it's not uh, a requirement to submit a portfolio. Uh, we highly encourage that. If you have uh, a background within a, the creative visual fields, please put, put, submit the portfolio together with the other components, even if it's a business-oriented uh, side of, of uh, of the creative industries because this gives gives us a, a rounded view of your experience so what we want to know uh more about you we want to know why you're motivated um sometimes uh, students can have different levels of, of experience specifically the management programs because often students are coming from different disciplines and they're wanting to acquire uh, different competencies to layer on top of what they already need to know um tell us about uh who you are, tell us about the things that might not come out within the CV itself. So first, if you have visual uh, material, supply that, that's very important. I've seen cases where uh, on the CV, I see students in fashion management, where I see they've done a complete undergraduate fashion program uh, and they're applying for business. And then I think, wow, that's great. We, this is the type of students we want, but I don't see any of the documentation of that. So that's 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 the first thing. The second, those draw out those things which make your profile particular. Uh, that's the most important. Yeah, thank you also for that answer. There is another question actually. So are the masters accredited? Yes, they are. They are accredited within the, the Italian system as a first uh, level master's degree. Nice. Uh, and another question that I get asked a lot uh, when I usually do counseling is which are the soft skills that the students develop during their Patin Doms Academy? Which skills they acquire? Okay, actually this is a question which I like a lot because it, it, it goes back to sort of, it goes to the kind of the heart of, of what we're doing as a, at a postgraduate level. Um, you know, if we make a uh, distinction between between hard skills and soft skills, hard skills are those skills which are teachable, learnable, and 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 uh, evaluation can be done. Reading, writing, arithmetic. You know, we know that from from, from uh, our our, our uh, schooling. Um, what are soft skills? Soft skills can be uh, leadership. Uh, it can be the possibility or the, the capacity of of working in groups. Uh, their personal personal traits, uh, and these are actually uh, things that are, are more difficult to uh, teach and test. But within our process, and also at a postgraduate level, these are the things which make the distinction. 
um, these are uh, the 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 act the aspects which uh, become uh, vision. It's about putting things together. Uh, it's about analysis. It's about proposing. So right here, we're already getting into uh, a series of of things which dis uh, differentiate from what undergraduate is, but also within the creative fields, it immediately becomes something. You know, design sensibility. How do you how do you teach design sensibility? This is something which obviously there's some innate traits and characteristics which get um, emphasized, and we 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 try to help you draw them out. Um, throughout the throughout the, the various courses and, and, and workshops, um, this is a question. Also, this is I mean I have a particular interest in the, in the soft skills and and uh, last year uh, did a, did an informal sur uh, survey, um, contacting journalists, uh, studio heads, industry around the globe, and um, today I knew this was a question that would would come up. Come up. So I brought some. I brought some. Uh, some of the results here, and and I'll give you just. I'll give you some of the, the top five results of this survey from from around the globe. Uh, the first soft skill, and uh, passion, passion. Uh, second soft skill, empathy. This is a very critical component, which which is part of, of a design sensibility. You have to understand circumstances and uh, the human condition to be able to respond to it. Uh, openness to other knowledge fields. Um, this is about curiosity. This is about uh, also a level of competence and interest. This is something which is uh, built in actually to our programs in that uh, we have 11 different articulated master's programs, but Within this, there is uh, uh, not only the possibility, there is a forced contamination uh, of, uh, of interdisciplinary study in that you will, coming into the school, you will decide to uh, enroll in one of our programs, but within the pathway of your study, you'll have the opportunity to take uh, courses and workshops outside of your main area of study um, and be working side by side with uh, colleagues that are from another area of expertise. So this is one of the ways. Um, uh, but also within your, your standard core workshops, you'll have people in, in, in the other disciplines working side by side. So um, you, can be, you can be addressing uh, projects from different points of view, different angles, collaborating uh, while going forward within your course of study. Uh, I'll just do two more and then we can let for other questions. Uh, another identity, identity, personal and cultural. This is something. Uh, th th these, I, I took the top five, and there's many others, but identity, personal and cultural. So, um, this is another aspect which is particular of Domus that we are an Italian institute. Our heritage is here. We're in in in, in the center of design. We're in Milan. This has been historically the center of design, but we're actually an international. Institute in that uh, the majority of our students are international. We have uh, in any given academic year, we have represented at least thirty different nations. So we're coming together. We're working cross cross disciplinary and intercultural. So this is something. This is a soft skill that you learn about other cultures, other skills, and you collaborate together, which is actually a reflection of sort of the global. Uh, context which we, are, we all will work we're working and we are working professionally. And the last one, the ability to observe and predict. This is absolutely fundamental. So this is about um, uh, observation, analysis, analysis is an important component to be understand, and predicting the future, which is at the heart and the nature of what designing is. And for those who, who um, speak the Italian language or Italian, Progettare, progettare, the epistemological um, uh, definition of that is to throw forward. So the act of designing is actually throwing forward something into the future. That means predicting. So these are some of the ways that uh, soft skills are, are incorporated into our course. And that even though that um, sometimes it's personality traits, sometimes it's, uh, they're emphasized. You can concentrate them, and you can build on on, on 
your professional skills as well as your personal traits and attributes. Okay, so thank you also for this answer. I have another question that we get asked a lot is the fact that the master is very practical and uh, we always say that we learn by designing. Hmm. Okay. What does it mean? Okay, thank you. No, uh, sometimes, uh, yes, we, we often, there's often referred to as practical and this is probably based on, on the structure of our academics in that uh, it's not the typical academic setting. Uh, in that we organize uh, the learning process around actually being involved in it, in the middle of it. So we're not simply theorizing, we're not simply studying the abstract. We are, we, we do give theory courses, we talk about theory, we talk about critical approach, but this is involved around a particular theme, around a particular brief. So it's, that's the learning, that's the learning by design approach. Nice. So thank you very much. I actually have a comment that it's not a question. Uh, so we have a comment from one of our former students says that she can easily say, you definitely develop every single skill in a professional thinking level. And you really start to see each step and all as a creative individual. So we really appreciate you guys' comments. Thank you very much. Also. Well, thank you very much. You know, that's, this, this is always great to hear that from an alumni. Uh, and that is, it becomes a testimony for what we do. And so that's, thank you very much. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, I have a question actually for the Managing Director of Dom's Academy. So in case I have any other questions, we will feel free to. Okay, in the meantime, I'm going to, Sure, walk around and see what the okay, students are yes, doing definitely. here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, here it is back. Hello. <laughs> so, I actually have a question. Uh, is it true that Domus Academy will move all the courses to a new campus in Milan? Okay, thanks for the question. Actually, Domus Academy is a dynamic uh, institution. We are always looking to the future. And uh, actually, our project in order to also uh, look at uh, uh, hiring even even more uh, the stand our teaching standard quality is uh, also to look uh, at more and more space. In the scenario we are li living, actually, this uh, uh, process is going to be gradual, uh, um, and actually, we are targeting spaces uh, close to the school. Uh, connected to the design district and uh, this is going to be let's say something to stay connected with the school in order to have a further update uh, for the actually the future scenario that we are going to leave uh, from September on. Okay. Thanks so much. So thank you so much. This was the last question. I have a question more related to admission. Uh, okay, asking, maybe I will leave the stage to you. Yes, so thank discussion. you very much. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, so I the chair. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, I saw a question on Instagram a little bit before asking when will the admissions be open for fall 2021? Uh, sorry, 2021. Uh, so definitely, we will officially open the admission a little bit later during the year. But guys, feel free to contact us. In the meantime, you can support you at our best and we will be able to help you also preparing all the documents that you need for the admission. Uh, so uh, let me just, sorry, check one second if we have other questions, but I don't think so. Okay, so uh, guys on the social media, thank you very much for joining. Uh, I... Thank you very much. It's been a great pleasure to have you and some of the alumni connected and hope to see you soon. <laughs> Bye guys on social media.